Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about another task on Code Wars, and I think it's quite interesting actually, since we need to implement a difference function. So as a words, we need to implement a function which subtracts one list from another and returns the result. So for example, as you can see, in our first array we have one and two, in our second only one, so eventually the result should be just two. Truth be told, I've seen this task so many times during the interviews, so if you're interested in that and how to solve it in the most performant way, keep watching this video. Alright, so in our first solution, let's just do exactly what we were asked for. All we need to do is just to return the values from the array A that do not exist in the array B. So first of all, I will add an array called result and return it. Okay, now we need to init a loop like this and we need to check if array B doesn't have the element M, then we just push this element into our result array. Let's take a look how it works. Test. Okay, attempt. Alright, this works. And actually, that's pretty much it about our first solution. But before moving further, let's take a look at our worst case. As you can see, we have an array A and an array B. And in our current algorithm, for every element in the array A, we will need to iterate through the array B, which means that the time complexity of this algorithm is A times B, which actually is A square if we have the same number of elements in both arrays. And this is not the best time complexity I can offer for you today, so let's get to the second solution. And as a part of the second solution, what I want to achieve is to remove this B includes, since under the hood it's actually the second loop over the second array. And in order to do that, we can create a separate object like minus 19, true, 0, true, minus 3, true, so on and so forth. So we will get every element from the array B and put it in the separate object. And next time, when we need to check if the element in the array A exists in the array B, all we need to do is just to check if there is such key in this object. And what is great about this solution is that execution time of getting value from the object is constant. Which means that the execution time of this algorithm will be A plus B, where A will be the outer loop, and B will be the time that we need to spend to build this object. Okay, let's take a look how this will work. First of all, we need to have a separate function called get object from array. So let it be also straightforward. We assign an object, we return an object. That's okay. And now we have a separate loop of the past array. Okay and we just put for every key from this array value true. Actually, it doesn't really matter what you'd like to paste here. So now we need to build this object here from the array B. Okay. And now we just need to replace this check like this if not obj of n. And that's it. So in this case, we will have a loop over our array one by one by one by one by one, but on every iteration, we will just check with constant time if this element is in this object. And that's how this will work. Don't forget this brace. Let's check it. We'll click test. Okay, we'll click attempt. All right, perfect. The third solution that I'd like to offer to you today actually is pretty much the same as the second one, but it just has less of code. And all we need to do is just to use the function filter. So, what we'd like to return is our array A, which is filtered, if this element 
is not the object. And that's actually it. So we can return the result. And what's happening here is that we're still building our object and then just return our initial array without the elements that exist in this object. Let's take a look how is it now. Click test. Yep, click attempt. Great, this also works. So as a conclusion, I just need to mention that our first solution had time complexity of a square and the second and the third solutions have just all a plus b. However, the first solution does not require any memory, so if you are limited with it and you can sacrifice with your performance, then you better go with the first one. And instead, if you have some memory and you can cache this information in the object as we did before, your performance or time complexity can be significantly increased with the second and the third solutions. And this is actually it. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end, first of all, and keep waiting for your solutions and comments below. Second, I would be happy to see you as a subscriber on this channel if you are really exciting about all of this stuff. Last but not least, let me know if something was not so clear, so in my next video I'll clarify it or provide more additional details about that. Thank you so much and see you next time.